Hey, Sam. The game ended like an hour ago. What are you still doing here? Oh, I told RJ I'd keep track of the team stats this season. I'm just finishing things up. Cool. Who's MVP this year? Well, I made a tally sheet of the points each guy scored so far this season, but it's a little sloppy. Let me see. You know tallying up the points for each player is fine for keeping track of things for yourself, but you'll need something else to display the stats. Yeah, I need something that paints a clearer picture. What about a bar graph? It's a visual graph with rectangular bars. You can use the bars to compare the number of points the players on the team have scored. Exactly what I need. How's it work? I'll show you. First, you need a title that tells exactly what your graph is showing. Okay. The total number of points each player scored so far this season. All right. Points scored this season. That's a start. Now, what happens with all my tallies? We'll get to that. But first, your graph needs a frame. Like a painting? Sort of. This frame has only two sides, and they're called the X and Y axis. The X axis is horizontal, on the bottom, and the Y axis goes vertically, on the left. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now let's title and label your X axis. You'll compare the different players here, so title the whole X axis, players that scored. Then, write each name down below. I put all their names along the X axis? Yep. Looks like RJ, Kevin, Bobby, Cody, Mike, and Sean. And done. Now what about the y-axis? The y-axis is kind of like the ruler. It's called the frequency axis. It shows the amount of what you are measuring. Title it too. Hmm. Points scored? Now what's the largest number of points? 65. I'll just number it 1, 2, 3, 4... Foul! If you number your y-axis from 1 to 65, it's going to be as crowded as the tally sheets. Ah, you're right. You need a scale to show data in easy-to-read intervals. The best way is to divide the biggest number on your scale into even parts. How do I do that? Find a multiple of 65. Um, 5? Perfect. It goes into 65 13 times. So you'll have 13 intervals. Well, 14 including 0. I don't need 0. Hey, every player started with 0 points, right? Every graph also starts with 0. Is it time to put in the data yet? Bring on the bars. All you need is to create a bar above each player's name that reaches the right number of points on the y-axis. Okay, 65 for RJ, 45 for Kevin, 14 for Bobby, 50 for Cody, 27 for Mike, and 35 for Sean. Looks great, Sam. I think I want to make another one. <laughs> ah, there's the artist in you. What's that other kind of bar graph? Horizontal? Yeah, horizontal bar graphs are sideways bar graphs. Basically, you just use the x-axis as the scale instead and compare things on the y, like this. Oh, bar graphs definitely are a useful tool to visually compare data. I had to decide on a title for the graph, label the x and y axes, make a scale of intervals so my graph is readable, create bars to show the data. Bar graphs can be vertical or horizontal. Sounds like you're quite the MVP when it comes to bar graphs. But what about on the court? <laughs> Eh, uh, I think I'll stick to the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs>